and welcome back to another BBOD talk. We hope you're all doing well today. Today we're really excited to have Josiah with us from the DigiBite project. Um, we're going to be doing a little interview with him today and we hope that everyone enjoys it. So first of all, starting off with our first question, we'd just like to ask you Josiah, what if what your role, main sort of role is within the DigiBite project and sort of if you could just provide like a little introduction to yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Josiah. I got involved with Digibyte originally uh, a little under five years ago now, uh, yeah. coming close to the five year mark, uh, not long after the project actually started. Uh, I found out about it because I'd been mining Bitcoin and I actually came across Litecoin and I sort of thought to myself, Litecoin's a little bit faster than Bitcoin and it's got a better capacity and this is cool. And then a couple of weeks later, I, I found Digibyte and I saw that and I thought this is even faster still and this is this is better. This is this is cool. This is something I can get behind. But I suppose what really appealed to me is the forward thinking nature, specifically around cybersecurity. So it's not just enough that we are the fastest blockchain uh, in terms of UTXO, but we're always looking for ways that we can grow and ways that we can improve. And the the focus, I suppose, on security is what really appealed to me the most about about Digibyte. And so I do things like this now. I do a lot of community uh, engagement, I suppose, uh, a lot of liaising with developers. Uh, I kind of help them out, I suppose, in terms of uh, planning and, and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But because we are a very decentralized blockchain, there's no one single person to oversee everything. And so it's it's a lot of people giving of their free time and a lot of working with people from around the world in different areas, different regions and things like that as well. Mm. So I guess like you being based in New Zealand, you can kind of come at it from a different aspect because you're in a different region. So you can kind of use that, I guess, to your advantage, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so even even the little things, like for example, with our mobile applications, it's not good enough to just have English. I mean, it's yeah. great that obviously we we have it in English, but yeah. when <laughs> most of the world doesn't speak it, I mean, we're we're potentially losing a rather large uh, target audience there by not being in things like Mandarin or mm. Spanish or Cantonese and things like that. So that's that's sort of the the global sort of outlook that we have that that is very important to us and is as part of our community is is to be global and not just specifically focus on that one particular region that it's it's so easy to get caught up in yeah 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 we've sort of seen from our side of things that as well like being global is really important and you can if you've got people based in different places across the world then they can kind of help you to give guidance from their aspect of things from where they are and how um how things are different and how to deal with the culture and that sort of interacting with traders and that sort of thing and getting used to it from different countries that's we, yeah i can understand why that would be so important to digibyte as well yeah, and I mean they're all they're all little minor differences and subtle yeah. differences in people's different cultures and things like that. But overall, they add up to be something that's that's really quite important to people. If if we're talking about, uh, we've been helping out a lot with some philanthropic work in Venezuela, and oh. the people that are over there that are using the mobile applications, obviously don't want to be using it just in English. So it's really quite important that we have it in Spanish for people to be able to use Digibyte to buy and sell goods in in a face to face environment in mm. their own native language. So yeah. yeah, the the whole kind of global community aspect to that certainly weighs into it quite heavily. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Um, so now would you mind just giving an overview, a quick overview of the Digibyte project itself? Sure. So Digibyte is based around the ethos of being faster, more secure, and being forward thinking. So those three things are kind of like the three pillars, if you were, of, of the blockchain. So mm. it's not good enough that we were already the fastest UTXO blockchain out there, but we had to take it one step further and actually mm. go even faster with our block timings. And it's not good enough that we'd already planned the scaling and things like that, but we wanted to take it one step further and plan all the way to 2035. And in addition to that, we even tested it. We went all the way, right the way through to basically fast forward the clocks as it were until the year 2035 and we set up a global test environment as well and we tested it out and we we, we saw what would happen and funnily enough nothing exciting happened things just kind mm. of ticked over and just kept going it was fantastic <laughs> to watch yeah. really so 
That combined with our security. So we were already quite secure with our Digi Shield, but then we implemented multi uh, algorithm. And then subsequently after that, we implemented multi shield. And it's actually probably one of the most secure ways for you to implement a proof of work blockchain out there. And so, in, in addition, we're still always looking at ways, again, being forward thinking to, uh, I, I, I suppose, look at how we can again improve. And so we're doing things like that with our algorithm swaps and, and some other things as well that are that are looking to basically yet again be forward thinking uh, with the security aspect of Digibyte. Mm. So I guess you're finding that like from the beginning, those were the things that you were ultimately trying to achieve was sort of be the fastest, be the most secure, that kind of thing. And like, um, so I guess that that was kind of your initial thinking when Digibyte started, I guess. Um, yeah, so, very much yeah, so. And we've kind yeah. of kept on with that as, as time has gone on. And so it's actually kind of funny because that's why we're not called Digicoin, because there is okay. more than just me yeah. being able to send you money over the internet and doing it really fast. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong, we can do that and we can do it amazingly well, mm -hmm. but there is so much more that you can do with a blockchain than just me sending you money. And, yeah. and so that's kind of also why we've been called Digibyte is because we want people to be able to store that data and send and receive that data and, and verify it on a blockchain. And, and so that's, again, uh, mm. been built into us since the very beginning of the project. Yeah. So with this, what do you find are sort of your main problems that you're now trying to solve with it? That's a really good question. Um, I'll give you I'll give you two two quick answers. So one of them is that everybody thinks that we're competing with Bitcoin, and and mm -hmm. in some ways a lot of people will see us as doing that when they first come across the project. But I see Bitcoin as being more of a kind of a reserve currency that's uh, even even though it's not going to be the fastest or or anything along those lines. That's again that's totally fine, and that's not something that we are trying to usurp or trying to replace. Uh, but rather we certainly complement it incredibly well. Now, in addition to that, um, certain things that Bitcoin isn't going to come across until the next century. So we're looking at things specifically in our core wallet software or in the way that we synchronize or in the way that we uh, are even optimized on a software level. And we've basically gone through and done certain, certain testing and debugging. And basically, it turns out that we've hit limits that Bitcoin aren't actually going to reach for another 100 to 150 years, depending on how well things go for them. So, mm. yeah, we've those those are two kind of, I, I suppose, different aspects to it. One of them is more sort of social. One of them is more technical. But those are yeah. definitely some of our, our challenges that we're coming up against. Yeah. 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 Um, obviously, you mentioned Bitcoin. I suppose we can't do this interview without talking about it a little bit. So, <laughs> <laughs> So what do you believe to be like the shortcomings of the Bitcoin blockchain? And then how is Digibyte sort of using that to improve upon certain aspects and then hopefully to achieve mainstream adoption? Well, I think I think Bitcoin's really good in the respect that they have remained intentionally slow. So I'm not personally convinced of the whole need for them to have something like the Lightning Network to be able to do peer-to-peer -peer payments. The whole idea of a blockchain is that you store data on a blockchain. So part of what we've done with Digibyte is we've specifically included the ability to scale up. And so that's that's one way that we are, are very quite different, I suppose, from, from Bitcoin. But in addition to that, it's not just about the payments, but it's about the additional data that you can store with the blockchain as well. So we can do a whole lot of things with our Digi Assets protocol that we've been working on. So in addition to already having our blockchain that's out, it's been functional in the wild now for five years, it hasn't had a day of downtime or anything like that. We're also now looking at other things like ways that you can issue an ICO on Digibyte or that you could issue concert tickets on Digibyte or airplane tickets or that you can store documents on the blockchain for verification and, and validation, like your last will and testament, things like that. You can put them onto the blockchain. Mm. And so that's specifically what, what we're sort of, I suppose, looking at now into the future is ways that we can bring this more to the masses, ways that we can make it accessible and ways that we can make it really easy to use, especially from mobile. Mm. Okay. So then sort of like for our final question, obviously that's a very interesting approach. Um, still sort of like going into Bitcoin a little bit. Do you feel like you're still kind of competing with the Titan that is Bitcoin? 
Um, and do you feel like, do you believe that Digibyte is sort of more of a means of transfer than a store of value? Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna say yes to both of those. So yes, we're we're definitely like like everything that's out there is always competing with what is effectively the the benchmark of Bitcoin. Mm. We we kind of we joked about it before a bit before the video that there's there's nothing out there that's slower than Bitcoin, right? What yeah. what would be your your point of difference if you come out and say, "Hi, I'm slower than Bitcoin." But yeah, so so we kind of we are we're faster than Bitcoin, and and it's about more than just specifically trying to explain that to people but also i suppose trying to share the difference that bitcoin is great more again as a store of value and yes we can do payments and we can do payments better than any other utxo blockchain out there bar none by a long shot but we're more than just that we're more than just being able to send money around the world really really quickly mm. we're about being able to store additional data on the blockchain the security and and, and that kind of aspect yeah yeah so i guess like there's a much bigger goal with Digibyte like it like you say it's not just about transferring money it's about achieving other things as well like it's this big yeah. it's a bigger goal to it at the end of the day and maybe in that sense like you are kind of competing block uh, bitcoin but not like there's Digibyte is trying to bring in new things that maybe bitcoin didn't even sort of consider in the first place I guess yeah, well, that's that's kind of the thing is is Bitcoin specifically went out uh, back several years ago and they removed a whole lot of the internal code that allowed you to do a whole lot of amazing and really cool stuff. Mm. And so we've intentionally left these opcodes enabled and we're able to do a bunch of really nifty things with them. Like I kind of mentioned before, like doing an ICO or doing tokens or doing uh, assets and tickets and document verification and we're already seeing Digibyte is being used by Fortune 500 companies around the world for shipping route uh, validation and verification so it is more than just being a coin but it is digital bytes of data that we're storing on the blockchain and, and I think it's a really important point of difference there. Mm. Okay so it sounds like Digibyte is doing some really interesting things. I've found myself that I really like the project and it sounds like it has a very good future ahead of it. It's been really interesting to talk to you today, Josiah, and I hope everyone has enjoyed our conversation and be sure to come back soon because we're going to be having more videos just like this and hopefully further conversations with Digibyte in the future. So we hope everyone has really enjoyed today's video and we'll see you all again soon.